Hey, what's going on guys? Philip Blair, Torch of Christ Ministries, and I wanna make a very practical video for you this afternoon. And I want it to be applicable to as many of you as possible. So I just wanna take three, four minutes, and hopefully this is something that you can apply to uh, the short-term future of what God wants for you. If you're a man of God that uh, has been desiring to go out there and preach or evangelize or even just speak publicly, uh, I want to just give you a few practical tips to overcome fear and anxiety and give you more authority, more boldness, and more confidence as you're speaking to what I would generally classify a hostile crowd, a uh, secular crowd, people who are outside the four walls of the church. All right, the first step that I would really just tell you is you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you're speaking through the power of your flesh, you're going to have fear, you're going to have anxiety, you're going to be apathetic. Uh, not going to want to get out there. You're going to feel like you have no motivation and uh, you're just going to be constantly battling the flesh in a way uh, that, that causes you to struggle in, in all aspects. You're just going to be constantly fighting in the flesh and it's not good. And you're not really going to see victory. Once you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, I mean, you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're going to have a fire in your belly and the power of God's really going to enable you to do what you just can't do in your own power, in your own strength. Um, when the Holy Spirit fills us up, he gives us uh, gifts and abilities and talents that we can use. And he, he's able to uh, just work through you in a way that you could never work on your own. And that's just, it's the truth. It's indescribable. You just have to seek uh, the face of God on prayer or in prayer on your face in the quiet hours. That's where the, just the, the manifest presence of God is found. So seek the Lord. Uh, supplicate before his throne, cry out to him, and you will, uh, he'll, he'll pour out a double portion to you, I promise. Now, um, after that, practical tips, things that I learned when I was in college, especially grad school, I took some leadership courses, uh, they, they forced you to go through business management, all these things, and a lot of it you could just throw out, but there were some very practical tips that they began to teach us, you know, um, and we could go into a lot of different ideas that are really interesting that doesn't really apply to this video, but I want to keep it simple and, and just really to the point. And that's to strive to, to stay in an uncomfortable situation. This is something that I have personally done, especially early on in my ministry. Uh, it, it, it just in the work that God has, just real quick, I don't, I don't want anybody to misconstrue what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is in the ministry that I am doing, all right, of course, God it's all his and it's all his for his glory. I don't own anything. I, it's all for the Lord. Uh, but what I'm saying is in my work, in the work that I have been charged to do, in the work that I have been given responsibility for, that's what I'm talking about is the work, not the actual organization that all belongs to God. But uh, from early on, I have strived to put myself in an uncomfortable uh, situation and, and, and places, locations where it's like, man, what is the most difficult place that I can think of to street preach? I preached on the top of pyramids. I've preached at the Grand Canyon. Uh, that was a really difficult one because people are at the Grand Canyon. It's like a library out there. People are so quiet and whispering. I get out there. And I'm like, Jesus is king. You know, and it's, it's a very difficult situation. Uh, and it was, I was actually with my oldest son and he filmed for me. That was three or four years ago. Uh, and, and so we've just every possible scenario I've thought of, uh, priest of the Lincoln Memorial and, you know, just all throughout the world, different, whether it's on trains or buses or, uh, in everything, I mean, there's not a lot that I haven't done at this point. I'm not saying that to my own horn, but it's really, I did it in the in the hopes of saying, okay, if I can just preach in, in as many places as possible to as many different crowds as possible, whether they're already Christian, I'm saying like you go to the, the Bible Belt, of course, not everybody's Christian, but you go to the Bible, but they're all, whether they're born again or not, they're very, uh, you know, kind and, and tender towards the gospel, whether in... Uh, Con, I would say conversely, you go to New York or California and you preach, it's going to be a hostile crowd that's primarily atheistic. Of course, there are a lot of believers in those in those areas, but it's not like the Bible Belt in the United States. You go to Australia, London, uh, different places, it, it, you're going to get a lot of hostility towards you. The general populace is going to be hostile towards what you're saying. So when you put yourself in different uh, in different climates and different atmospheres of spiritual atmospheres, you're going to get a lot of different reactions. Don't take it personally. Preach with the power of God. Preach the gospel. You're not going to convince somebody to be a Christian. You have to preach God's word and let the power of God move. Let his gospel do the work. You can't, uh, even if you win an argument, a lot of 
new preachers, a lot of new evangelists focus on apologetics. They read a lot of books and then just regurgitate what they read. Well, you might convince somebody that you're right and that you want an argument. Even if you do that, it doesn't mean they're going to become a Christian. I would so much rather lose an argument, but then eventually them um, become born again. And what I tell them deeply affect them. That's why you will not see me argue with a lot of people. But instead, I will strive to speak to the heart, speak through the emotions, speak to the wounds and the hurt that they carry. And if they reject the message that I bring, I don't take it personally. I know that they're rejecting the Lord. They're rejecting the gospel. I don't internalize that because if I were to preach about anything else, if I came out preaching Santa Claus or if I were preaching uh, the Bugs Bunny or, you know, I don't know, whatever mainstream television show just talking about anything else and I go on this long rant they would probably listen and be entertained but because I'm preaching Jesus and people don't want to hear it they don't want to confront the sin in their life they don't want to think about uh, what is going on internally the struggle that they're facing uh, to uh, you know that, that light in, in, in darkness conflicting God's trying to pull them one way and the devil's trying to get them to go to the other way and they like their sin and they don't want to think about it or confront it and that's why what we bring to the table is so incredibly unpopular but you have to know what you're talking about so you know early on I want to share something with you real quick and I know I said three or four minutes and I'm at six but it's important when I was in the Marine Corps this was uh, probably 2007 I got out in 2008 I did five years and I was in intelligence I worked underneath a pineapple field in Hawaii underground I did some really cool stuff but uh, right before about a year before I got out I did really what I would call my first um, round of public speaking where I had about 60 or so military personnel in a classroom and I did PowerPoint It's the first time I really ever did public speaking and I was quite terrified now I remember a couple of years before that I took some night classes in college um, and we had to give like a two-minute uh, just speech to the class and I was terrified it was so hard for me even just to speak for one or two minutes and then even just in a couple of years I was able to stand before 60 joint military personnel and to instruct them on operational risk management if you've ever been in uh, any kind of corporate aspect or setting, you'll know what operational risk management is. Uh, it's not anything fun. It's very dry, but you can make it interesting. That's the thing is you can take anything and make it interesting using analogies, using stories, giving testimony of what you've been through. And, and it applies to all forms of public speaking, whether you're talking about something dry like safety, whether you're talking about something that's crucial like the gospel, you can use analogies and examples. That's why Jesus he used parables. He used stories that you can relate to. Do that, but uh, interweave the biblical scripture, you know, and, and I've talked about this before in uh, past videos. It's one thing to go out there and say, according to 1 John 1, 1, and then just spit out or regurgitate scripture but it's another thing if you can go out there and you can interweave scripture that's why I think it's so silly when people leave comments and they say brother Philip why don't you just preach scripture you're going out there and you're telling everybody what you think and your opinions but you're not given any scripture and I'm like if you knew the Bible you would know that I'm actually using a lot of scripture and most everything I'm saying is from the Bible but I'm just not quoting it word by word verse by verse the power of God in his word is not just regurgitating word for word. It comes through faith. When we speak God's word in faith, it doesn't have to be the exact word for word. I'm not saying change the message, change the verse, or change the meaning at all. What I'm saying is you can speak it in uh, in conversational words, and it means the same, and the, the spirit of God is behind it, and you're speaking by faith. Don't twist what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, um, for example... John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life I can go out there and I can preach that and say the uh, you know the Lord of all creation is saying that he sent his son to die for you that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life I didn't quote that word for word but the same zest and power and and and, and just you know, the Bible says in Jeremiah that his word is like a hammer that breaks the rocks. I'm not quoting that word for word. What I'm saying is there's still going to be that punch. That hammer is going to be hitting that stony heart that they have. And there's going to be power behind it. And that's the message that I want you to understand tonight. The more you know God's word, the more confidence you're going to have. The more you're going to be able to go out there without fear or anxiety because you're speaking through the power of God. You can, uh, you can speak God's word in faith in conversational words where you're not just... 
and don't get me wrong, there are settings and places, and I do it all the time, where you're saying, according to Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. You can quote scripture. What I'm saying is don't just go out there and just do that. Use analogies. Use stories. Use examples. And then preach the gospel. Help them understand what repentance means. Don't just go out there and scream repentance, because a lot of people don't know what repentance means. Explain to them what happens when we repent. Explain to them that the only thing that's uh, that, that gives us the ability to turn from sin is the power of God, right? He draws us. We respond by uh, choosing to repent, which means we change our mind about sin. We want to turn around. We turn to Jesus, but we still have no ability in our own flesh to walk towards the Lord. So when we repent, we turn around. We surrender. Through surrender, God puts his spirit inside of us. He seals our spirit till the day of redemption, and he gives us new life. And we're born again through the spirit of God because our spirit is now sealed with his. And through repentance and surrender, his spirit place within us and now we are enabled through the power of God to begin living in a holy way all right so then we're able to turn from sin what I mean is we've turned from sin and now we're over to over overcome sin to not sin anymore so explain that to people help them understand help them to understand the necessity the need it's so important that we get baptized in water and that we uh, and that we show that outward demonstration of repentance that we've been buried with Christ and raised as a new creation explain these biblical concepts to people so that they understand Stand. All right, and it's so incredibly important. The more you know, the more confident you'll be. One thing I learned early on in the Marine Corps is the louder you speak, the more confident you're going to feel, the better you're going to feel about yourself, and you're also going to be able to protect yourself. More people are going to hear you. All right, young uh, evangelists, young preachers, young pastors, whatever it is, it, you've got a burning in your soul, you've got a, a, a compulsion to preach and to get that message out. Use these practical tips when you go out, and I promise you, you'll see fruit. All right, pray. You got to go out there and you pray. Or excuse me, you got to go in your closet and pray. When you go out there, you'll see the results. Think of it like this. When you pray, that's you being fed by the Spirit of God. That's you getting closer to the Lord. When you read your Bible, that's Him strengthening you in faith and in wisdom and knowledge, understanding. When you go out there and you preach, that's game day. When you go behind the pulpit in a church and you preach, that's game day. All right, That's the, the, the result. That's you pouring out. The prayer and the reading God's Word, that's Him pouring into you. You're behind the pulpit preaching. You're out on the streets preaching. That's God pouring out from you. Everything He's poured in, now you're pouring it out. If you're empty, you're not going to have anything to pour out to the world. All right, so show the love of God, show the mercy of God, the compassion of God. Help them understand the severity and the, the seriousness of the situation. And I promise you, you will see the fruit of God abound to his account. God bless you. I love you guys. If you enjoyed this, share the video. Uh, I think there's a lot of meat in there to chew on. And I'll see you next time.